couple things. Um, this is being brought to you today by Tempo, which is an electro music performers organization uh, that you can learn more about as we go through here. Uh, I'm going to talk about some of the events that we have, and uh, that's one of the reasons I'm actually doing this workshop is because there's a lot of folks out there that are uh, trying to do something more interesting visually to go with their music online, and many of us are doing online concerts. So um, that is the idea behind this. Uh, we're going to demo a number of techniques for about 45 minutes, and then uh, the last 15 minutes are going to be questions derived from the Twitch chat. So if you do have a question, please put it in the Twitch chat, and uh, I'll scroll back through there towards the end uh, to gather any questions up. So with no further ado, um, I want to take a look, quick look at the agenda that I put together here. Um, I'm going to talk a little bit about prerequisites. Uh, there aren't too many. Uh, talk a little bit about my approach, and then I'm going to jump right into uh, cameras, filters, all these different topics here, um, more or less in this order. But one of the most important things that I'm going to uh, show and that you'll notice is that I'm going to be combining these techniques uh, quite often. So even though I might be doing something with a camera, um, we might be bringing in an image or we might be doing something else on top of it or behind it. And I think that's where a lot of the fun comes in and a lot of the things that I've had uh, a lot of fun doing and wanted to share. So um, we're going to uh, be popping over here, and uh, I'm going to try to address you as best I can, but I'm going to have a lot of things going on on the screen, so I don't mean to uh, look down upon you or anything, but um, I find it's best to have everything up on my big monitor and then have a few select things down below here. Uh, so right now I'm just using my FaceTime cam, and we're going to come back to that in a second. Um, this isn't really... Uh, for specifically OBS, but OBS is the program that I know the most. Pretty much everything that I'm going to show is probably possible in other programs, such as vMix. Um, so this could probably be applied just about anywhere. Anybody that's doing online streaming can use a lot of the ideas I'm going to share tonight. Um, if you're already familiar with open broadcast software, OBS, great. Um, if you've done some streaming, great. Um, if you have music content and no graphics to go with it, then you're in the right place because this will give you some ideas of how to put some graphics with your stuff. And uh, really the only prerequisite that I have is that you have an open mind. Um, much of what I'm going to do is going to be low tech in some ways. Uh, some of it is going to be based on the limitations that I've had um, as we've gone into this streaming craze during COVID. Um, I'm running everything from one MacBook Pro from one laptop. Um, many people are lucky enough to have a separate machine dedicated to graphics or a separate machine dedicated to streaming. If you're one of those people, all of these techniques can still apply, uh, but you're in even better shape because you can push the envelope a little bit more. In my case, since I'm doing everything on one machine, I have to kind of pick my battles. And um, because the MacBook Pro that I have doesn't really have an awesome GPU uh, graphics processor, um, I have to cheat in some ways to get some stuff uh, done that I want to do. Um, so some of this stuff is going to look easy as well, and it's it's actually going to be a little tricky. And everybody that, uh, that I know that's doing this uh, that pulls off really interesting things has put a lot of time into it. So um, really there's nothing to replace putting the time in to do testing and uh, use these ideas. So I'm going to jump right into cameras and talk a little bit about cameras because those are probably going to be one of the first things that you're going to use. Um, I'm not going to talk about specific models. Um, I'm only going to say that if you have a 15-year-old Canon um, Handycam, pull it out of the closet and plug it in. It might work. Uh, I've got one right here. I use it all the time. It's not plugged in right now. Um, likewise, there are dozens of $30 webcams on the market right now you don't have to spend a lot for a camera. Um, or you could just use your FaceTime cam or your built-in laptop camera, which I'm doing right now to start out. And uh, in case you're wondering why it's black and white, um, I'm using a filter to do that. I'm going to show you how to do that. Um, part of this uh, tutorial here and this, uh, these ideas here, I need to share my OBS screen with you. 
And uh, this is going to be a little bit like Inception. You're going to have screens within screens. But it's the only way that I can truly show you what I'm doing. And uh, I'm going to try to explain what I'm doing, but I think you need to see it as well. Um, and because I've got a lot of screens that pop up um, on top of one another, uh, you're going to need to see all those. So um, I might even hide myself here because you don't really need to see me for some of this stuff. Um, but for right now, um, just a really high-level overview of OBS in case you're not already familiar with it. OBS is a, a broadcasting tool. Um, I like to think of it as kind of a t television station in a box. Uh, anything that you would see um, on a television program from the nightly news to a movie, um, you can create that kind of flow with OBS by having basically scenes that you construct and each of those scenes has different types of media elements inside of those scenes. Uh, the focus tonight is going to be on the graphical elements of those scenes, and I'm going to take you through some of those. Since we're talking about cameras, I want to first show you how I've got my FaceTime cam here. I go down here to the plus sign underneath my scene or my sources. And this gives me a whole selection of different media elements. And I'm only going to touch on maybe a third of these tonight. Um, but the way that you get a camera into here is you say video capture. And then when you go to video capture, you can select what kind of camera you want. Now, I happen to have a number of different cameras here. And the FaceTime camera is one of them. Now, I've already added that camera, so I'm not going to add it again. But what I can do is I can go to uh, my FaceTime camera that I've added here. And I can double click on there. And you can see there's my camera. I'm connected. Now, the camera that's on the MacBook is not a black and white camera, naturally. Um, but I'm using a filter to turn that into black and white. Um, mainly because due to wearing masks all the time, my acne has been terrible. <laughs> so this is my way of filtering it out. Uh, so if I go into uh, FaceTime camera and I go up here to filters, there's actually two ways to get to this. So if I look at my camera and filters, that's one way to go there. Or if I uh, control click on the camera, I can go to filters. And uh, for right now, for today, I'm only talking about the effect filters in terms of colors and visuals. There are also audio filters, but we're not going to cover those tonight. So I'm just doing a, a color correction here. Normally it would look like this, um, but I'm turning that into black and white. So this right here is a graphical element that you can use to create an effect. Um, you can have maybe different cameras in your setup, have different coloring, um, you can also do things like masking, and you can also do chrome, chroma key, green screen type of stuff. Now, I'm not going to go super into detail about green screen because there's tons of tutorials out there, um, and there's a lot of other things I want to cover. But these filters are available for every single camera that you plug in, uh, and they can be all different. They don't have to be the same. So that is how I'm doing this um, image of myself here and everything I show you I want to show you how I'm doing it so while we have this screen up I want to show you how I'm bringing in even the OBS um, screen here so the OBS monitor for our training right now is simply a screen capture now the screen capture can also be used to creative effect here I'm using it as an, an instructional tool and basically what I would do is I go down to my plus sign here and I would add a window capture. And this is going to show me what window do I want to select out of all the programs that I have running. Well, almost all. Here's a tip. In OBS, this is going to give you most likely the programs that you're looking for. So for right, he right now I have OBS here and that's how I'm showing you my OBS. But what I have found is this other option here, show windows with empty names. Sometimes you're trying to share a program or a window or a screen that is on your computer, but OBS doesn't see it, or you don't think it does. That could be this option here. If you say show windows with empty names, you'll get a whole lot more options here. 
Um, a lot of times I find that happens with the control panel for my audio interface. If I'm trying to demo that for somebody, um, that has to be shown through this uh, extra checkbox here. In any event, um, I'm just doing this to show you my OBS screen. If I wanted to do something more creative, like let's say I had, um, let's say I'm an electronic musician and I had uh, Ableton Live running, and I wanted to pull in uh, Ableton Live to show you what I was doing, how I was performing the piece, or uh, maybe to add some interest there in some way, uh, what I can do is I can bring up my Ableton Live project. So I'm going to load that up here while my fans spin. <laughs> And um, as soon as that loads into a project, in three more seconds, um, what I can do is I can share that screen. So I'm going to open my a little piece of lounge music that I made for this demonstration. <clears throat> now again, I'm running this all on one machine. So now I've got Ableton running, I've got OBS running, and I'm also actively streaming. So if I go to do a new screen share, uh, window capture, let's say, and I'm just going to leave it named that. And here I've got live, lounge demo. So this is my lounge demo. Now, you'll notice when this comes in, it comes in at a larger, uh, s larger size than my actual uh, palette here that I can show. Uh, a shortcut that you can use, and you want to be careful because this, this gets me a lot of times, um, Command S is going to make it full screen to that um, actual window there. If you are used to using Command S to save, like I am, uh, sometimes you'll mess your screen up because you're thinking you're going to save something. Actually, OBS saves as you go. You don't have to save and they reserve the, the S for um, actually making this uh, full screen. So now I've got another graphical element here of my Ableton screen, and I could do that full screen. Uh, so when I'm playing the song, you can see that there. Okay, so real cheesy lounge track. Um, I might want to do something a little bit more interesting with that by applying one of those filters we talked about. So if I do a filter, um, we could go down here to maybe do that color correction again. But rather than use it for color correction in any way, I can change the opacity of that image so that now Maybe I've got other things going on on the screen. I've got um, maybe some video. Maybe I've got something else. And again, this is very abstract, but you know, electronic music tends to have a lot of abstract visuals, and I think that OBS is really perfect for uh, developing those ideas and uh, either doing them live or even pre-recording them. So that's a way that you might want to use uh, the application sharing screens as a graphical element. Uh, to kind of show folks what you're doing. Okay, so now we're going to look at a couple other things involving cameras as we go. And uh, most of the cameras that I have hooked up here are um, web cameras, USB cameras. And they connect via a USB hub, a powered USB hub, which is important because I want them to get their own power from another source, not necessarily my laptop. Uh, so I end up having actually two hubs plugged in here uh, because I have a multi-camera setup that as we go through, you'll see here. Um, one of the other kinds of cameras that you can use, uh, which again, you might have in a closet somewhere, is uh, an IP camera or an internet camera, typically uh, kind of a security camera that maybe you had as a baby monitor or something from around your house. Um, I happen to have a couple of these. They're kind of old. Um, they're not well supported. Um, I actually had to update them through a very long process and also lock them down. Uh, so I'm not going to be able to show you the exact setup because I haven't password protected. Um, but what I can do is um, pull up the format of how I'm actually doing this. So 
if I was going to add a camera um, through this uh, method, what I could do is I can go to my browser uh, media element. So in OBS, if I go to my plus sign to add a source, I can add a browser source. And what this lets you do is basically add practically any website that you want to add or it could be an application. Uh, so that in itself can be a graphical element. Um, what I'm looking at specifically here is for usage of an IP camera. What you can do, uh, and I'll show you the format and then I'll show an e example of a camera. Um, what you can do is, let's get rid of him and bring that other thing back. Okay. Down here is the format. So um, the format to bring up one of these cameras, and you can look at this on the web if you do a search for um, your actual camera and just do like RTSP, which is a, a protocol used to access the camera uh, from a web browser. And typically, for the cameras I have, the format is RTSP colon slash slash, and then you have the ID of the camera, like a, the username ID, and then you put a colon, and then you have a password for the camera. You should always have your cameras locked down. If they're not locked down, you can leave this out, but I don't recommend it. Um, and then there's usually an at symbol, and then the IP address of the camera. Now, if you need to find the IP address of your camera, um, of your internet camera, you'd want to go through your router and use your router tools. That's a whole other topic I'm not going to cover here. And then usually there's a port number, and in my case, there's a little um, script page that runs uh, a little bit of code that tells the browser what to do once it gets there. And uh, this is how um, I'm doing one of the demos here. If I pull up my uh, actually two of the things I'm doing here. So I'm going to pull up, I'm going to actually hide OBS for a second, and I'm going to bring this up. And I'm going to get rid of my browser source because we don't need that. So what are we looking at here? <laughs> so um, this is an internet camera um, that is mounted back here just on a little shelf and it's connected wirelessly through that that URL that I created except it's you know it's an actual ID password and, and IP address and it's pointed at my wall where I have a couple of really cheesy DJ lights flashing okay now if you didn't know that's what it was you might be able to figure that out but I've also um, gone through and also added one of those filters that we talked about. So there's a filter on here um, that is going to show, let me see, I got to go into filters though, not into the, uh, and that's the color correction. So if, if you looked at it just like that, it's like, yeah, those are just lights on a wall. Um, if you look at it with the color correction, well, that's something else. I might, you might be able to turn that into something, you know. Uh, if you do some opacity on it and blend it with something else. Again, this is where the open mind comes in. This is also where the low tech comes in mind. I don't have to worry about running this color generation and this image capture really, except for the camera. Um, there's, there's not a whole lot of processing that my machine has to do to get that. And there's a lot more ways that you can um, exploit that by you know, different types of lights you can use. Um, one of the other um, ideas here that I was playing around with before we started. So we have a couple different uh, Twitch shows that we do uh, within our community. And here's a little kind of promo page for those. So we have Nick's Garage, which is uh, very often Fridays and Saturdays. Um, we also have ElectroZone that they do stuff throughout the week and many weekends. And the graphic that you're looking at right there is another internet camera that's um, pulled over from the other side of my room here pointed at another part of the ceiling with another type of bulb uh, and also some laser lights in the background so this is again very low tech 
but can be very effective to create a mood. And uh, if you add some other elements to that, uh, it could be really interesting. Okay. So we know we're going pretty fast here. And the idea was to cover as many different techniques as I could and then show how I've combined a few of them. And then also uh, leave some room for questions at the end here. So I want to jump into um, another really effective technique that puts a lot of processing away from your main computer. And that is using an external monitor and a, any kind of uh, player, video player. I mean, it could be anything from a VCR to a DVD player to an SD player. And in this case, uh, what I've got going on here is this is an old Logitech webcam from easily 15 years ago. Uh, I think it's 640 by 480 uh, if we look at it here. Yep, that's as high as it goes. So it's not good for a whole lot. Um, but what I can do is I can point that at a monitor that is running a visualization of some sort, a video that I've already rendered. This is pre-rendered video. And um, then I can pull that in via a camera. And all of that processing is totally f free and clear of my computer. Um, if I want to change that, I have a whole directory of, I've got probably 50 or 60 different little pieces of video on there that suit different moods. If I want to do something quickly, if I want to do something scripted, I could put the scripted stuff on there and then queue that up pretty easily. So that is one technique I've used a few times. And if you notice, there's probably also a filter being applied here uh, as well. Uh, we talked about screen shares already and didn't talk too much about text, but don't forget about text as a visual element. Um, right here, I'm just doing some identification with it. But if you go to the plus sign here under sources, and you click on the text element here. You have all your typical kind of font capabilities here, some colors. And uh, this can be very effective for creating um, text effects, if I can spell. The only thing you can't do here very easily is center or justify. Some of this is manual. Uh, there are some other uh, features under the hood to do some of that, but I'm not going to cover all those right now. Um, and if you're wondering how I did the scroll at the beginning with the standby, that's a basic uh, text technique, but it's under the filters for the object. So if I go to my filters, it's an effect, and it's scroll. And so these can be scrolled horizontally or vertically. OK. And if you have, let's say you have a piece of music that has uh, lyrics or vocals to it or some sort of message, um, you might want to use this as a visual uh, element to your piece. And you can make this go really fast, make it really s slow. You can make it colors. Um, that can be very interesting as another element. OK. Uh, a couple obvious things, still images or uh, slideshows. Uh, within OBS, you can do a still image. So if I go to plus sign, I can go to image. And I've got a couple of those already set up here. Uh, there's lots of really great public domain images that you can use. Always check to be sure, of course, before you use something. Uh, this is from the Library of Congress, and um, I'm just going out to a folder on my desktop uh, to pull up this single image. So this is for a single image. If I want to use a slideshow, then I would go to Image Slideshow, and I would create that element. Here's one here that I created. And if I just let this sit here a second, it's going to go through these space images. And we'll go double click on that to show you how I did that. So 
Uh, there's a number of settings here for the type of behavior you want it to have, the type of speed that you want it to have. And down here is where I'm saying use this folder for an image slideshow. And I, that could be anywhere on my desktop or whatever. This is set to loop, so it'll always loop back around. You could do it one time or loop. You can randomize it, so if you have a ton of images and you want it to be just all over the place, you can randomize it. So there's a lot of, uh, a lot of fun you could have with that. Very low on the processor. Uh, you can render the, any kind of photos, pictures of your own, artwork, bring them in, and uh, orga organize them there. Okay. So I want to talk a little bit about rendered video and um, how I typically use that. Now, um, one thing I want to mention before I go further is you've probably noticed as I'm doing different things here, so right now my camera is on top of the Edison image uh, and the other graphics are all on top. Uh, that's because anything that you do is going to be uh, put into a layer based on the order that it appears in this uh, in the list here. So let me get my... Um, OBS back here. So, for example, here's my single image. We'll show that again. And if I want to look at my slideshow image, here's my settings for my slideshow image. But you see that's all showing based on where it appears in this list. So if I put my slideshow on the top, you're going to lose everything else. etc. There's my text effects. <laughs> so you can see, now this is showing my OBS screen, so it's kind of multi-layers that you wouldn't necessarily have. Um, but once we start adding some text moving around, we add some slideshow, um, you don't need a whole lot to create something. Now it's up to you to create the creativity uh, and the purpose behind what you're doing. These are all just techniques. Uh, how you use them, just like anything else, is, uh, is up to you to explore. Okay. <clears throat> uh, many times I'm going to pre-render my video because I don't want to have to do it all in OBS. Um, and I use a number of different programs to do that. Uh, one of the big programs I use, and I have to thank uh, our friend uh, Robert Dorschel for turning me on to this a number of years back, uh, but the program is called Magic Music Visualizer, and it's created by a guy named Eric Newman. It's a very cost-effective program. There's a couple different versions of it. Uh, do yourself a favor and check it out if you're not already familiar. Um, but it allows you to do both pre-rendered and live video. And I use it pretty much for all kinds of stuff. It, it's kind of my go-to for a lot of things. And uh, so, for example, if I want to add um, any kind of, you know, basic video to something, let's say I go to media source here. I'm going to add a media source. And I want to go browsing for a video. Uh, I'm going to go out here to find something. So I've got all kinds of stuff I can bring in here. Uh, so here's something I did on the coronavirus. Now this might have some audio, so we'll see if I have to turn the audio off, but now we're okay. Uh, so this was all done in um, Magic Music Visualizer. Uh, there's some stock stuff here, and then all of the effects are things that happen in, inside of Magic. And you can do just about anything with it. Um, you can also bring Magic into... Uh, OBS uh, through a platform called Siphon. Now uh, I'm going to do this uh, after I turn this off. We don't need him there. Okay. Um, and I'm going to end up having to jump over to another scene here. So I'm going to jump over to my Siphon demo. And uh, this is one of the more advanced things. Again, this is going to be running all on the same laptop, so we'll see how it goes. Uh, it was okay during testing. But I'm going to bring up my um, magic scene here. And Siphon is a protocol that allows you to take video content from one 
device to or one uh, program to another and OBS has a siphon add-on uh, that if it doesn't come standard anymore it's you can download it from the OBS site and uh, then when you go into uh, Magic Music Visualizer you tell Magic that you want to broadcast through siphon and uh, that's when you'll see this okay so what you're seeing right now is my FaceTime cam going into Magic Music Visualizer live with a bunch of crazy effects and then that is coming into OBS. Uh, my machine's running fairly well right now. I don't think I'd be able to run... Uh, well, I do have Ableton open, so we can try to run Ableton right now. I would recommend a more powerful machine. Pretty cheesy, huh? So that's um, using Siphon to get Magic Music Visualizer into um, OBS. Now there's another similar um, technique, a similar process we're going to use for another program. And uh, I'm actually going to close Ableton right now. We're not going to do any more music with this one. Um, and this is a program called uh, Lumen. And Lumen is by a company called Paracosm. And it's got a little bit different um, kind of shtick here. So let me bring that up. I have a live example we're going to try. So, And I just have the demo. I haven't actually purchased Lumen yet. But you're going to see a Lumen live demo here. And I'm actually going to show you both the program and the output. So the program is in the upper left-hand corner, uh, and the output is in the lower right-hand corner. And again, this is the Lumen demo. Uh, the only problem with the demo is it shows their logo. Um, if you purchase it, then it takes the logo away. These are some presets, and uh, the thing that's really nice about Lumen is it has MIDI capability, and pretty much anything you see here is MIDI mappable. Um, so once you've got it mapped, uh, you can change all of these settings around, uh, either with a sequencer uh, live in time with the music, uh, or manually, just uh, make your changes manually. and. Um, it's got some nice presets in it, but of course you can make your own uh, things here. It does have camera input. So if we go back up here, whoa, to this one here, this has camera input. And there's me in the studio. Um, if I wanted to patch this, uh, take that patch apart, it's got a very modular look to it. And... Uh, that has a lot of capability there. Uh, again, this is running all on the same machine. Uh, if I had my choice, I'd rather run this on a separate machine and then feed this in uh, through a different method so I could free my machine up a little bit uh, for music. So, But that is also coming in through Siphon. If we go back to um, OBS, I will show you how I pull that up. So let me go back to OBS. If we go to the plus sign to add a media source, you'll see siphon client here. If this does not appear in your version, uh, then you might need the plugin for siphon, uh, which should be on the OBS project site. And uh, just download the, the latest one that's compatible with your version. And um, then that'll open up all kinds of programs that use siphon, uh, which is not just these two, but I'm sure there's a lot of others. Okay. So that's a couple apps. Uh, another app that I use that's free, uh, this one happens to be free, is um, something called Motion Effects. And actually, I first learned about this from Ken Palmer, so some of you may already be familiar with this one. But um, if we go into, uh, yes, let's see here. I have some examples I can bring up. 
I'll bring up an example of this. And I will put it in OBS so you can see it. Uh, we can do it as a screen capture, actually. No, let's do it as an example. That'd be easier. Uh, so I'm going to do a media element. I'm going to do media source. And I'm going to do, go find this on my desktop. Workshop, motion effects examples. Let's do this one. Okay. So motion effects basically just has these uh, smoky fingers that come off of whatever the camera is pointed at. Uh, and I think in this one I turned the camera itself off, but the effect is on, so you can see the effect. And I think what I'm actually doing there is I'm showing VCV rack. Yeah, that's VCV rack. So I was feeding VCV rack into um, motion effects via a camera. So I basically pointed a camera at my screen and then recorded it. Again, very low tech. Um, VCV Rack is a virtual modular uh, music program that I use. And it's, uh, for those that have used it, it's very graphics intensive. And as a result, running that and OBS at the same time, um, unless you have a really powerful GPU, is not a good idea. Uh, you'll get a lot of glitches on audio. Um, so what I ended up doing is whenever I want to do something with VCV Rack, I've got to think a couple steps ahead and render it a different way uh, before I can actually broadcast it or just, you know, take a chance on there being a lot more dropouts while I'm broadcasting, which I'd rather not do. So that's um, motion effects, and that's free. That's I think that's Mac only, but it is a free program. Um, one other free tool that um, you should know about, if you already subscribe to Adobe products, uh, if you already use Photoshop or Premiere, uh, there's another tool called Adobe Spark. And uh, it used to be free. I don't know if it's still free. It, it comes free with my subscription right now. Um, but it is a basically it's a tool to create quick um, kind of memes. If you want to create a meme with text and a graphic, it has all kinds of uh, AI built into it that lets you create images, uh, still images, but they also have a video feature. So you can create little commercials uh, or little, um, you know, little descriptive things to add to your presentation. And um, they're very, they're very slick. Like compared to, you know, 10 years ago, trying to make something like that took forever. Uh, this takes a lot of the work out of it, but it's called Adobe Spark. And that's for still and video preparation. Uh, I use that quite a bit for small, uh, small things that I don't want to spend a lot of time on. Uh, it's not worth opening Premiere or something like that. And I just want to make something quickly. So I want to get into, um, before we wrap up here, a couple hardware uh, items. And one of those is um, something called the Cheap Hacky Audio Visual Board. And... Um, this is a project I built, I guess, towards the end of last year, early this year. Uh, it's developed by Jonas Bears, and uh, he is really awesome in letting his uh, creation out there and creating a board for it that's just beautiful. Um, this was one of the most significant builds I did up to this point, uh, but it was a lot of fun to work on. And it's basically using a, uh, a video tester, which is the, the red board that you see there, and um, that gets plugged into a board with a number of um, high-frequency oscillators, low-frequency oscillators, and lets you do all kinds of uh, crazy madness with video and sound. And um, this is uh, from my bench when I built mine. If we um, put that away here, we'll see the live thing sitting here behind my, my uh, mix bench here. And uh, right now, this is plugged in. It's uh, the blue cable there, the blue VGA is coming out of the chav. It's going into a converter that's converting that VGA into S-video. 
And the only reason I'm doing that is because I need an, I need some sort of input uh, that I can still handle into the computer. And I have a Blackmagic Intensity Shuttle, uh, which you can't see here, just behind me here, uh, where that S-Video cable plugs in so that I can capture this signal. And that signal uh, is right there. Um, now, if I was back there, I um, can't actually reach there right now, but if I turn the turn some of the oscillators there, uh, dials, I would be able to manipulate this. Uh, if I connect it to my rig via audio, I would be able to manipulate this as well. Uh, but that's a way to use uh, hardware to capture that. And really, to capture that, all I'm doing is a video capture, which in this case is the Blackmagic Intensity Shuttle. And I've got a, another little program that runs in the background for the Blackmagic that tells it what input I'm trying to use. So that's how I capture that. All right, so it is time to check the chat for questions. So I'm going to scroll through here to see what we have. And if you have a question, uh, let's see. So I see folks uh, mentioning alternatives to OBS. There are many alternatives. Uh, there's a program called vMix. I'm not sure if there's a Mac version for that. Uh, there's Streamlabs OBS, which is a dumbed-down version of OBS, uh, which I've tried. Uh, there's a couple other things that are browser-based that don't have quite the feature set yet that are still in beta. Um, the um, Paul mentions broadcasting the VCV visualizers. Yes, that is very cool. Uh, VCV Rack has a number of graphical elements built into it. Um, which if you're able to run VCV Rack and your broadcasting software on the same machine uh, without too much trouble, uh, those, those are really cool to experiment with. Um, cool with OBS, just wish I could save my shows. So saving your shows, uh, you either do while you're broadcasting, set it to record. You can even set it up to always record. Uh, that is in the settings. Uh, or you can record manually, or you could just let uh, the the platform that you're broadcasting to, like Twitch, you set Twitch up to record. Uh, it's only going to be available for two weeks, and then you got to make a copy of it. Uh, or if you broadcast to YouTube, YouTube will record it. Um, although YouTube is going to turn it around a lot slower. Twitch is almost immediate uh, when it when it does. Um, So I do have a, a supplemental document with some um, hints on some of the gear I'm using and a few links, so I can send that out. If you're interested, I'll give my contact information here at the end. And um, let's see. Yeah, Adobe Spark is still around. Uh, let's see. Yeah, so the biggest competitor o to OBS is probably vMix. Um, and there's a couple shootout videos out there between the two. vMix is very, very tempting. And I think if you're on Windows, um, there's a lot more uh, between the two that is competitive. Um, but then, you know, you do look at what OBS does for the uh, money. And again, I don't. I'm not a developer for OBS. I have a lot of problems with OBS in terms of particularly how they have video um, integrated with audio, how the audio is set up, um, but we won't get into that right now. But OBS is kind of a necessary evil right now. Um, let's see, looking at... Uh, Let's see, looking for back through for questions. And if you have one, put it down in the uh, current uh, as we wrap up here. Mm -hmm. uh, da -da. 
Uh, somebody mentioned Go GoPro. Um, so GoPro for visuals. Do not believe the hype. Um, the GoPro webcam beta came out in July, just before I moved um, this last time. And I jumped on it. Despite everything being packed away, I jumped on it to try to get it working. Um, got it working, sort of. Uh, but at least on High Sierra, it needed its own build. So I got a hold of somebody at GoPro. They made a really fast um, developed version for High Sierra, and it worked okay. Fast forward a couple months, and it basically bricked my camera. I had to reinstall the firmware, the original firmware, do a factory reset. Uh, I was on the phone with GoPro for about two hours, and um, this most recent um, test was a fail as well. So the, the webcam is still in beta for GoPro. Um, those that have it working, more power to you. But I would de if you don't already own a GoPro, I would not recommend going out to buy one because they're rather expensive. You can get a lot more mileage out of a $30 webcam um, from Amazon. Um, and there is a native streaming on a GoPro, but it is limited in that you can only stream to one destination. So I couldn't do all of this multi-camera uh, stuff that an OBS would allow. Uh, remember, OBS is like a television station, so it's at, it's allowing me to add all of these different elements together uh, to broadcast. If you're going direct from the native streaming on a GoPro, not the webcam, which is still in beta, but the native streaming, um, that's not going to allow you to do overlays and extra cameras or any of that stuff. Um, Uh, I think another thing I don't think I mentioned, so in terms of like um, camera quality, um, for most of the stuff that I do, I don't need 4K. If you're doing something where you need 4K, um, this, isn't, this isn't the area that I'm, I'm specializing in or even that I recommend. Um, you notice a lot of this stuff is abstract, it's grainy, it's purposely a little bit odd. You know, those things don't need 4K. If you need 4K cameras, uh, and you have the bandwidth to use them, then again, more power to you. But that's not the idea here. The idea here was what can you do with very little uh, on one machine running everything, you know, with a basic Internet connection. Uh, and again, this is over, uh, everything I've done tonight is over Ethernet. Uh, anytime you're going to do something like this, you don't want to use Wi-Fi, if at all possible. Uh, that's going to be um, a limitation right there. All right, I think I got back to the top of there. Uh, doo -doo -doo. Somebody mentioned RTMP. Yes, RTMP is very cool. We did some stuff with that back over the summer. And it's nice to nobody, know somebody that has an RTMP server. I don't have my own set up right now. Uh, can the intensity shuttle bring in more than one source at the same time? not at the same time. So my intensity shuttle right now, I have three things plugged in. I have a composite plugged in, I have an HDMI plugged in, and I have an S-Video. Um, I have to go into an application, uh, basically, let's see if I can show you on here. I have to go into my intensity shuttle and I have to tell it which one I want. Um, if I try to use two, I don't think it's going to work because even though I select it here, there's a helper app that I I have to go into um, that forces me to select it in the helper app. So right now it's set up for the IZ. If I want to use it with the Chav, I've got to change it over here and this is the master this is what governs everything that that device does not what's in OBS and by d and because of that I can only use one of these at a time um, I really wish that was the case the other thing that I have not been able to get to work um, on this is the component I have tried multiple um, sources different cable connections I have not been able to get the component input to work on my shuttle. It's kind of obscure. It's not something I really need, but for what they charge for these things, you'd like it, everything to work. So maybe there's something missing there. 
Um, but if anybody has been able to get that to work, I'd love to know how. <laughs> so, um, but yeah, this is the helper app that goes with the shuttle there. Um, does Lumen have to be bought into, brought into, does it have to be brought into OBS via Siphon? Um, I think so. To, to do what I was doing, I think you'd have to do Siphon. You could do a screen capture. So um, I don't think I still have this running. The Lumen here. Oh, there it is. This is like <coughs> a still because I, I shut it off. But if I did a screen capture of Lumen, you would have what's in the upper left corner. So it wouldn't be that exciting. Um, you would maybe be able to zoom in on this upper right hand corner of the application and capture that but again i don't know that that would be as of as effective as doing it through siphon but it's worth experimenting with um let's see Oh, t touch on blending the video camera with the graphic background. Oh, okay. So if we have a camera, let's go to um, the camera. So we'll use my FaceTime cam here. And we will make it just a little bit bigger. So if I want to blend that with anything in the background that's there, I'm going to use a filter probably. It's one way to do it. Um, I can mask, but that's a whole other topic. But blending, I might want to do opacity. And then it's just going to be a matter of how I layer things. So if I want this effect, this is OK. If I want a little bit different effect, I can, I can play with how dark that is. Um, there's a lot of variability there, depending on what you're looking for. Uh, let's see. Okay. I want to save the config of my show here in OBS. Not sure if that was a question or not. <laughs> uh, oh, how did I? How did you do the opacity trick in the filter section? So I think I just showed that. Um, again, it's filters, and I'm using the color correction, which has an opacity entry on it. But some of the other ones do as well. Um, I think there's. Um, I don't know if the chroma has. Yeah, Chroma has a an opacity. And sometimes these are fun to combine. Uh, the Chroma with the color correction um, and then with something else, like if I have, if I Chrome out the green and I put that in front there, sometimes I can get some really neat effects. Let's see if we can uh, do this. I'll take my... my camera this is on the fly so we'll see if it works and put him in the front actually I don't want to let's not not color correct let's just chroma and let's do intensity up here it's probably not going to do exactly what I want right now but since I'm chroma you can kind of see it there where it's I'm chroming at that out where it's getting a little green there and then if I blend that with this you get some weird effects it's all about experimentation just like you would with your audio um, you know, a lot of audio pieces come just from experimentation. I find the same same exact thing happens here, is that you're 
you're messing around with stuff and all of a sudden, you know, you come across a cool effect that you want to try to explore. Uh, okay. Does Lumen do RTSP? I don't think so. Lumen is its own uh, standalone program that does siphon. Um, it doesn't run on a web page, so. <clears throat> Uh, I think we got uh, all of the questions up to this point. So I want to wrap up here uh, just with another quick announcement to give a shout out to some folks. I want to thank Tempo, uh, Johnny and Mike and Nick for helping set this up. And I uh, want to also give a, a shout out to um, some shows that we have. Uh, a number of the folks in our community um, perform at the uh, International Virtual Garage, uh, aka Nick's Garage, uh, that started as a, a real-life event last year, um, but then had to move virtual uh, over the summer. And uh, we also have uh, our friends over at ElectroZone, which is based out of Ithaca, New York, and they perform uh, throughout the week. And uh, both of these have uh, really excellent concerts, electronic music, um, all kinds of different genres of electronic music, very, uh, at times very experimental, with lots of uh, video as well. And um, if you want to uh, reach out to me at any point, um, again, my name is Jeremy DePrisco, and I have um, music up on um, SoundCloud, YouTube, and on uh, Bandcamp, and you can reach out to me at jeremydeprisco.net, and um, I will pass on some of the links to some of the stuff I use here uh, as well for the post of this so that uh, folks can uh, further research some of these tools. So that brings us to the top of the hour, and I want to thank everybody uh, for coming out and asking questions and stuff. And uh, we will be in touch with more of these types of uh, things down the line. Uh, we've got a lot of talent in our community and lots of folks willing to share. So um, stay safe, stay in touch, and thanks a lot. Have a good night.